Welcome back to three months of modal logic, the sequel to the 100 days of logic here at Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with epistemic logic, looking at axiom D in doxastic and epistemic logic. So as you may remember from many of the previous modal logic series, axiom D kind of looks like this. Basically, we have the strong modal operator implying the weak modal operator. For doxastic and epistemic logic, it's going to look as follows. If S believes that P, then it's not the case that S believes that not P. Or in the case of epistemic logic, if S knows that P, then it's not the case that S knows that not P. If you don't remember, possibility that diamond is defined as it's not the case that it's necessary that it's not the case that something. And it's permissible that P is defined as it's not the case it's obligatory that not P. You might not understand why these are isomorphically similar to the previous versions if you don't remember that fact. But because we don't have a kind of weak operator in doxastic or epistemic logic, we just use the negations and explicitly explain what we're defining it as. But the alethic modal logic axiom D could just as easily be written as it's necessary that A implies it's not the case that's necessary that it's not the case that A. Just as the deontic modal logic axiom D could be as easily written as it's obligatory that P implies that it's not the case it's obligatory that not P. Hopefully that all makes sense and these axioms are kind of clear and it's clear how these are the isomorphically similar pair to the other axiom Ds. Basically, if S believes that P, then S does not believe that not P. If S knows that P, then it's not the case that S knows that not P. If Remy believes God exists, then he does not believe that God does not exist. If Ricardo knows that his cell phone causes cancer, then he does not know that his cell phone does not cause cancer. Basically, this is kind of a claim that you don't have contradictory beliefs. You can't both believe one thing and its contradiction. While the epistemic version of this is generally going to be uncontroversial because to violate it is going to kind of violate the law of non-contradictions as we're going to say that knowledge implies truth, and we're going to see that in the next axiom T. The doxastic version is not at all. It seems that often people do in fact believe things that are contradictory. And while we might call them irrational to do so, it doesn't mean that they don't in fact believe these contradictions. There's a big distinction to make here between someone having beliefs that don't make sense and someone not being able to, by definition, believe those things. A person can have beliefs that don't make sense. People often seem to have beliefs that don't make sense and lead to contradictions. That does not mean that it's impossible for them to have those beliefs. And that's what this axiom is claiming. This axiom is claiming that people cannot be irrational. And, as you will probably notice from most people, that's clearly false. In fact, as noted in an earlier video, someone that believes just in a non-classical logic could break this principle, even though their beliefs are completely rational. Up next, we're going to move on to our next axiom, axiom T in doxastic and epistemic logic. Watch a new video every single day for 100 days here at Carnades.org and stay skeptical, everybody.